Hello Aquarius, welcome to the channel, this is Asnoitja here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level, what it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. This could be somebody from your past, could be someone that you're with currently. Could also be a situationship, actually. Relationship, a situationship. For others of you, it could be a very strong and energetic connection. There may be glances, but no one's really speaking up. All right, lots of feelings and emotions coming out here. As some of you may feel that the roles are reversed because of the intensity of these cards. Oh yeah, definitely. Some of the roles, not roles, not plural, but some of the role here, not some of the, why am I making a mistake when I'm talking? Um, the roles here may be reversed because of this card specifically, grief, that's huge. The emotions are huge. Here we have cheating. Somebody has done something. Could be cheating. Could be... Oh my gosh. Um, this is a very huge card to a victim. Victimization. Aquarius, what is happening? One, two, three, four, five, six cards that are quite dark. Dark in the sense that there's a lot of deep emotions that are not happy emotions that this person is going through. And because of the type of cards these are, um, Aquarius, you may also be going through something like this. <clears throat> we have here doubt, followed by mothering, then we have illusion, embracing the shadow, wild woman, grief, love, laughter. Then we have victim under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Aquarius, the connection that I have with you, I have a lot of doubts right now because of what has happened. I doubt that this faith and this trust that used to exist, I truly doubt that it'll work out the way that I wanted it to because of what I've done. In you, I have found someone that has this unconditional love, this nurturing quality take care, shelter, provide, protection. All these things I have seen and experienced from you. And I see you like this. Someone who is very giving and someone who is very caring. Selfless. And now I hide. I'm embarrassed. I hide behind a false mask, behind a veil, not truly showing you what it is that's in my heart and my mind. Certain things that I've gone through, certain things that I've seen. I wonder what it is that in this connection that binds me to you. I hide myself. And I hide my feelings and emotions and I don't tell you what it is that I feel. And this is because things have become quite awkward. I showed you a side of me that was very impulsive, compulsive and aggressive. And you saw that dark side. But this is a part of who I am as well. It's something that I can't change. I do feel that 
in this connection, now there's a sense of awkwardness. There's this feeling of being uncomfortable. Once upon a time, a long time ago, things were not like that. But now things are very uncomfortable and awkward. And that is exactly why I hide, because I'm embarrassed. The awkwardness comes from the fact that I was not as truthful as I should have been, as I could have been. There is a sense of deceit. There is deception, suspicion, information that was shared, but that wasn't truly told in detail. Pieces of information that were taken out, putting blanks in those places, letting you interpret what the story was all about. I know I did this, and I shouldn't have. I should have been more honest and truthful. I do feel that in this connection, there is this extreme remorse, guilt, regret, the sense of sadness and melancholy that I feel. At this point, I feel as though I've lost you forever. Certain things that I have gone through and seen. You were once that shining star in the darkest of skies, but now you no longer shine. For me, you're fading, and I don't like this. I want to have you, because I realize now that this pain, this suffering, and this hurt that I feel, I feel this way because I love you. I realize now that I do. This love that exists, it is true, it is pure, it's sacred. It's an unconditional kind of love. And it's a love that has a very strong friendship to it too. In you I have found someone who is like a friend, a confidant. And you know, you know me so well, what makes me tick, what makes my heart happy. Right now, all I want is to be with someone who is that special someone who has always made me feel at ease, who has always made me feel at home. That someone is you. But I also know so much has happened. And the things that I have said and done, I have turned you into the victim. I have victimized you. You are now someone who suffers in silence. Because I don't talk to you. To you it seems as if I don't care. As if I'm not noticing. Oh, but the truth is I do. I just have a different problem. I just don't know how to approach you. I overindulged. I took you for granted. I used you. And sometimes I would misuse you. These things that I have done, they're not right. I overindulged and I should not have. And I realize that now. You wonder why. I don't talk. I can't 
look at myself in the mirror. I can't stand my own self because of what I did, the way I have behaved to someone who has always loved me unconditionally and softly and gently in such a nurturing kind of way. How could I have behaved in this way? How could I have treated someone in this way? Aquarius. Da, da, da. Oh my God. There is so much going on here, guys. What is going on here? You have a lot of situ like uh, the situations are different. It's not just one thing that happened between you guys. There's multiple things that happened here. And it's as if it's all piling up. And yet, yes, this person still loves you, but they do these things. Why do they do that? Do you really want to be with someone like that? There's a lot of toxic relationships out there, and I'm seeing this is one of those, guys. you got to be careful. Yes, somebody can love you, but they may be in love with somebody else or in love with an addiction. I'm even getting that with this vibe of this reading. What I'm getting is that somebody truly loves you, but they grieve that they've broken your heart. Yet, there's a part of them that lives in this type of bubble where they it makes them happy. They do certain things that make them happy. And for some reason, it's kind of repetitive. I see that here. Um, with the victim card, that's not good because it's a sense of victimization, right? So... This person has victimized you to that degree. It's not right. For a small portion of you, the roles can be reversed. <clears throat> there could be this situation where um, maybe some of you feel like the victim or even you cross watcher, you may have felt like the victim. However, at the end of the day, there is love here. But from what I'm seeing... Love might just not be enough because this person's entire personality is quite different. Not exactly the type that you would want. You need better cards in order to have a great relationship. This situation is very dark. What I'm seeing right now in my mind's eye. Okay. I'm seeing a very dark and murky kind of pond. The sun is setting, it's pink, the sky is pink, the pond itself is kind of pink, kind of like a pink violet color, and there's one gray rock, and someone here is standing on the rock, but it's literally, they're deserted in the center, like they're in the center, and there's nothing around the sides. There is land, but it's quite far, quite far, six, seven, six, seven um, feet or so, so they're stuck on this gray stone, in the center and around them, they have this kind of muddy water, but in the light, it just looks a little pink. Um, what I'm seeing is like they, this person, they've turned you into that individual standing on that rock. And anywhere you go or dip your toe in, you don't know how deep you're going to go in. You don't know the risks that you're going to take. There is a lot of uncertainty when it comes to this specific individual. That's what I'm getting. There's uncertainty here. There's no solid foundation. But there's hope. Yes, this person feels that there's a connection between the both of you. But what have they done to prove it on an actual mature and tangible level? What have they done? There's a lot of love here from your side, but is it practical? You need to understand there's certain things in life when we deal with people, and is it practical or not, or is it just because our feelings? This person might, I'm just getting the number 10, 10%, this person might be the right person, but only 10% for some of you. The rest of the 90, this person's absolutely not the one for you. 
And I usually don't talk like this. I usually don't say this, but this is just the beginning of the reading. I have three other uh, sets of cards that I'm going to do. So let's have a look at that too. What I'm seeing here is definitely this person right now has a very toxic kind of vibe and you need to just take a step back and start taking care of yourself. This person needs to learn a lesson. That's what it comes down to. They have not learned a lesson. You can't come back and go back into their life easily. It's not, it, you, they won't learn a lesson if you do that, if you're just going to be there for them, if and when they call. And also, I didn't announce, and I remember in the beginning I didn't announce, so for those of you who are new, I do channel through my higher intuitive self. I don't actually channel through any spirit guides. I never have. I have specific reasons for that. At the end of this reading, I do channel archangels, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. All right, here I have the Lover's Path Tarot. These cards, I look into the reason why, there may be several reasons, but this is one of the reasons, one or two reasons, why this person started to behave the way that they did. What truly happened that caused the problem in the first place? Things may have been okay in the beginning, but then things just went downhill. So here I look into that and the reason why. Why did this occur? Okay. Some of you may not have gotten closure that may have really burned you like on the inside. Some of you, this person may have just simply ghosted you. Um, for others of you, maybe they're just breadcrumbing, bread, breadcrumbing you like maybe once a month they text you or something like that, right? So this is something that has happened within this connection that started to decrease the, I'm getting the word connectivity between the both of you. Okay. Prince of Staffs and Oppression. Prince of Staffs. Here we have, remember, well, not for those of you who are new, I read these in the reverse. Okay. So here with the Prince of Staffs, at some point in time, there began this lack of passion, a lack of integrity, not really taking any action and not really wanting to move. Scattered energy and a lot of hesitation, the inability to focus on matters at hand, the need to develop skills that may have brought their dreams into reality. So, scattered energy means that they were focusing on too many things all at once. Um, they may have gotten to the point where they were very overwhelmed. And because they had so much scattered energy, that means that they could not focus it on you, Aquarius. When is energy scattered? Usually when somebody has a bunch of other things that they're doing. Taking care of a loved one, finishing up their projects, trying to find a new job, right? Like there's different things, right? So this individual did not have the type of time, energy, and effort. Now you didn't get any card here that shows being overwhelmed. They were not overwhelmed. But what I see here was that there were just simple hesitation and their mindset was that type that their energy was just scattered and it was not focused. They had the inability to focus on matters at hand. So there was an inability to do this. They had skills, but they hadn't brought them into reality. So they were living in more of a fantasy land at some point in time, even though they should have been more serious. They were not. Here we also have oppression. <clears throat> so you see, what what I see with this card, the Prince of Staffs, right, is that you guys could have worked like a team. And you may have Aquarius, but it seems like this person didn't do that. They weren't working alongside you. One of the reasons why they were not working alongside you was because depression difficulties and a sense of release they were feeling oh there you go okay remember how i just said there's no card here that shows overwhelmed okay well the part of this card it does use the word overwhelmed sorry about that i don't i can't memorize all these cards and the the words that come with them but it does say here the feeling overwhelmed or oppressed 
by circumstances or emotions and having a sense of confusion, the inability to change one's life for the better. Here it talks about, though the situation may feel overwhelming, hidden forces are at work, be patient and trust that things will improve. This card talks about depression, it talks about difficulties, and it talks about release. And that is why they were hesitating, because they were feeling quite depressed, very negative. Um, but the feeling of being overwhelmed. Now, were they overwhelmed with work or with things like that? No, they were being overwhelmed with the emotions that they were feeling for you. That's where the overwhelmment was. Okay, so let me just clarify this, okay? In the beginning, I said this person is not overwhelmed with the amount of um, things that they're doing because their energy is being scattered, so they may be doing this, this, and this, but they don't have time to give to you. That's different. The type of overwhelmed feelings they're talking about here, it is because they are completely overwhelmed over you. That's the difference right there. So it's not because of any workload. It's because they were overwhelmed with who you are, what you're doing, how they're going to be with you. And because they were overwhelmed, there were hesitations there. Here we also have depression. <clears throat> they were depressed or they were sad. And they had to release this energy, but they were unable to do that. They were feeling difficulties. Sometimes when you have a situation like this, it's not you it's them. They had some type of problem that's not showing up here that's very underlying. There's a reason why they're sad, why they're depressed. Perhaps a connection or before you, they had a bad breakup. Or maybe they have been in a home that's very abusive and they just don't feel comfortable in relationships because they think it's going to turn out just the way my parents turned out. You know, for example, right? Um, but there is definitely a sense of sadness, melancholy, depression here. And there was hesitation doing that. It was their state of mind. Their state of mind was not right at the time. And they also ended up making you feel, perhaps, as if they had overindulged. You did have the victim card before. With the victim card, it does indicate that this person may have used you or done certain things where they got their way and you obviously didn't. But this is also something that they would have been feeling depressed about and hesitated to move forward with you. Why? Because they know what they did is not right. They're feeling regret and remorse. And that's also why there's a sense of depression, despair, sadness, melancholy. You did have the grief card. There is sadness here. Sometimes that sadness occurs because they have behaved in this way. This is a prince of staffs. That's a wand, right? Very passionate, in a way very immature, trying to do things in a very impulsive and compulsive kind of way. So I do see here hesitation because they knew what they did was wrong and they did not want to move forward with it at all because they didn't want to hurt you again. It's a simple kind of thing here, like a, on a humanitarian basis, they didn't want to be with you. And I know that sounds weird, but that's the only way I can explain it. Now, in addition to this, something in their past is kind of like an underlying thing. There's something here from their past that bothers them to the point where they're unable to be with you the way that you would like them to. So this is something that happened. They are a very complicated um, individual. This person is quite complicated. But please understand one thing. This person doesn't feel that you were the one to blame. It wasn't your fault. Um, the chorus, the song, what can I do to make you love me? What can I do to make you stay? Um, it's a very old, it's an old song, but I'm getting that song right now. So don't feel like it's you, that it's your, you're the one that caused this problem. Maybe a small portion of it was, but the majority of it here is coming from this person. All right, I have here the Beginner's Tarot. 
here I'll look into any actions, any plans, any intentions that this individual may have. Ooh, the devil card. Followed by the high priestess. Two major arcanas. We have the three of wands. Knight of Swords. Here we have Temperance under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. The Devil card here. Yeah. Sexual addictions. This person was actually addicted to you. Sexually, sensually. Um, they were feeling that they had to be a bit controlling. They were obsessed over you. There was a sense of inner turmoil. They tried to release themselves from this, but they were unable to do so, this feeling, and it started to become very toxic. For some of you also, this person felt, with this card, that there is a spiritual connection and a bond that they just can't break. If they try to move away, they end up thinking about you. Literally the word obsessed. In my, in my other deck, um, we have the Temptation, which was the one before the other deck that I used. Anywho, temptation is the devil, and it does define it as a toxic relationship, but it also says controlling, someone who feels and needs to be controlling in a very sensual kind of way. Also feeling jealous about what others may have. They feel the envy. Um, they feel envious because of how others are with you or treat you. They want you. They want to be with you. But the problem here, especially now that this card came up and before you had the victim card, right? It does mean that it's a toxic connection. And yes, there's a spiritual bond here, but also it's hard for this person to let go because it's like they get pulled back. It's like a yo-yo. Here we have the high priestess. This individual knows and they feel intuitively what the future may hold, but they're really keeping it to themselves. They're keeping very quiet, like the illusion, the illusion card. Um, being very quiet, not talking, not discussing. Just showing one's presence, but keeping quiet. Here we also have three of wands. Waiting for one's ships to come in, so they'll see it when they know it. Or rather, they'll know it when they see it. <laughs> They'll know it when they see it. The situation will change. And then they'll know that that's the time and place and day they have to make their own changes. But that time hasn't come yet. They're still waiting for it. What I'm seeing here is an absolute action card. And it's great that it's working out this way for you. Um, from the Three of Wands, because they're waiting, boom, you have here the Knight of Swords where they are rushing. They're rushing back into your life. They're rushing back to get you. Why? Yeah, because they are slightly obsessed over you. There's inner turmoil. But they do feel this powerful connection with you. Remember, there was love as well, right? So this is not just about lust. There is definitely love here. It's just that you have to teach this person how to love in a way where it's gentle, it's soft. There's there's more of an emotional aspect to it. It's not just about um, lust. This person's rushing back and they realize the value of you. They don't want to lose you. And therefore, they're coming in fast. We also have here the temperance card. Very beautiful. They do finally feel a spiritual connection and they also feel that it is important that the both of you, to some degree, Find an equal balance, an equal give and take. The yin and yang aspect here, they feel like you both belong to each other and you complement each other. This is what this person feels like a shell. I'm seeing a shell. I'm seeing an eggshell. The shell that I'm seeing, it's just 
two halves, right? Um, or is it two halves? I don't know how to say that. <laughs> it's one egg cut in half. So there's one part and there's another part. You put them together, that's one part right there. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. But I see that both of you um, are supposed to kind of like be together. And there's this... I mean, the texture is the same. The color is the same. Everything about you is very similar. And it only makes sense that all the pieces fall in together because both of you are one. You're both equal the same. This is what I'm seeing right now. Not sure why the egg is important. It's a boiled egg. Well, they're about to boil it. Um, well, it's not a boiled egg either, is it? It's not like... That's strange. It's basically just a shell. I don't know why I'm going on and on about this, but just understand it's an egg, half, and then you both complement each other and you make that one unit. Before people start writing, stop talking about the egg already. God, we get it. Oh, the comments. <laughs> yeah, we get it. We get it. It's an egg. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Just give me a sec here. I'm going to do my little prayer. Okay, so let's have a look what the angels have to say about this. So regarding the one we just had, I do definitely see there's action there. person's going to come back into your life or they're just rushing right into your life. They realize the value of you. It's not like how it used to be. Things are changing for this person. Okay. Meditation brings answers. And we have here communicate clearly. Be assertive. Followed by ask for help from others. Then we have here, within the next few weeks, sometimes this can also be months, within the next few weeks or months. Ooh, you have here, it's up to you. So you do have a choice within this connection. And they are saying here, there's no need to worry. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you have here, the overall arching theme is improving health. So there have been maybe a few of you who have had health-related issues. And health, remember, it's not just the physical. For me, it's your mind, body, spirit, and your soul. It's a whole bunch of yous all put into one. So when you're taking care of yourself, it's not just the physical. That is definitely important. But in addition to that, you have other aspects that you have to be taken care of too. Here we have meditation brings answers. Now, meditation here, my angel guide, Angel Fakiel, has told me it doesn't have to be a very lengthy period of time. If you don't have time, the minimum is good 21 minutes for meditation Meditate on the source, on the holy light of God, uh, who we call God. And then we also have here, it could just be prayer as well. Prayer, two, three minutes maximum. Um, it's good enough, but if you want to go above that, that's perfectly fine. But the minimum at the least, it's best to do two to three minutes. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is because there are certain things that are happening in your life right now. And what's happened is that it's it's too much and it's very, um, things are very critical, things are very practical, very logical, very cold, very calculated to the point where you have become distant from who I would say um, thyself, I'm getting the word thine, I'm not sure why, but anywho, um, a disconnect between yourself, 
the different parts of you. And it's as if sometimes you're on autopilot and you're doing things, but you don't even know that you're doing them. And it's just a random everyday hustle, okay? You need to start grounding yourself. I'm also getting, again, be that cosmic egg. <laughs> the egg is the theme of the day. So I am getting that how you were born, you were very much connected to the earth. You're very much connected to nature. And it's important because it's still a part of you. It still feeds you in a way. And you can feed off of it. So it is important for you to ground yourself. The only reason this card came as the first, and the first the strongest, it means that you have a lack of connection with the spiritual side. Um, that is you. I'm not talking about connecting with like spirits and stuff like that. I'm talking about connecting with you. You have a spirit. You have a soul. So connect with that. Know who you are. Know thyself. That's what I'm getting. Hmm. Very interesting. Okay. We also have here communicate clearly and be assertive. Wow. Does that come out absolutely straight? Like a sentence there. Um, you're going to get a chance to talk to your person of interest here. And they are saying when you get the chance, do communicate clearly with this person. Let them know what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with, and be assertive. Let them know your boundaries, healthy boundaries. Here we also have that the timing will be perfect. It's going to happen in divine timing, not during the time when you think it's right, but at another time in the future. We also have here ask for help from others. So there are people out there who may want to help you um, with all of their hearts, right? There's people out there that you might not know who are very helpful. This literally could be somebody who you meet face to face. It could be a friend, a family member. It could also be somebody online. Somebody that just is in like, a, I don't know, like a thread or a chat uh, room or something like that. And you ask a question and they're giving you helpful tips um, on, on life, right? That happens. Um, ask for help from others. This could also be, and I'm getting, I'm just simply getting books. So somebody that has written a book, you can also just seek certain answers um, in those types of books. If it's a regarding relationship and you have a specific question, maybe you can get that. These are all made by people, right? So it's a person that did it and that's help from that person. Here we have within the next few weeks or months, it is up to you. You will be making a decision going forward. There's a decision here, Aquarius. Is it too toxic? Is it too unemotional? Is it too detached for you? Do you want to be with this person? You are going to be making up your own mind and it does not matter because you always have another reality, another timeline. You jump from one to the other and the result's going to be different. It's already written out there for you. That's what the celestial beings do. It's like a grid. So don't worry. Some of you will decide to be with this person and you will make it a point to be assertive and to communicate clearly. Others of you, after you ask for help from others, you're going to gain some insight and some inspiration. And you know what? You're going to start to think very differently, a fresh perspective, a new perspective, and you will be creating your own reality and something new. Some of you will be with this person and some of you will be free on your own or with someone else, depending on what you are looking for and what you accept in your lives. Here we have, there's no need to worry. So no matter what happens, at the end of the day, it still indicates here that things are going to work out for the best for you. And they are telling you here that there is no need for you to worry where this is going to head. Under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme we have here is improving health. So with this particular card, it is very important because some people do go through certain things and it gets to the point where we just lose our health. 
now spiritually, emotionally, physically even, right? There's so many things that can affect us. So it is important for you to start taking care of yourself because if you don't, health is wealth, health is happiness. You don't have your health, you got nothing, seriously. There's hope, but hope can only get you so far. If you're not physically able to do something, that's going to be difficult, right? So it's important for you to take care of yourself as much as you can. If you feel that this relationship is very toxic, then most likely that is an indicator to you from the universe that, you know what, it's time for you to move on and to reconnect with the source. That is something important. Just learn. Go back to the basics. Go back to grounding yourself. Be the egg that you once were. <laughs> the egg is the theme right now because <laughs> I'm seeing it again. All right. Tell me, what's with the egg? Is somebody having an egg? Is somebody maybe pregnant? Um, do you feel like you both, you know, complement or complete each other in a way where it's like a perfect shell and you put together and then you're just that one unit? Um, let me know. How, how does this egg thing fit into this whole equation? <laughs> I'm getting the words right now, Cosmic Egg. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I also wanted to mention, for those of you who are new, I have another channel on YouTube. It's called Asnoinchia Audio. And I do have videos related to um, their relationship. It is also spiritual connections. Some are for past life connections. And then I also have um, another video I recently posted a while, it's not too long ago, but it's about negative energies, what they are, who they are, how to get rid of these things, how to deal with these type of things. So hopefully that'll provide you with a little bit of clarity, some guidance uh, regarding your respective situations that uh, many of you are going through. Please let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated today with you. All right, you all take care, stay safe. Bye now.